So, you want to be an artist, and you're about to enter college, right? And you just found out you need a... Portfolio. What? Okay, first of all, what is a portfolio? How do I order my art in the portfolio? What if I do ceramics? Do I send my pots to the school? These are all excellent questions. To answer a few, you do not need a physical portfolio. Everything is digital. You can submit photographs of your 3D art. Just make sure the photos of your art are well lit and not on top of the pile of clothes on your bed. Yes, lots of artists and designers are messy, but let's keep the hot mess to ourselves, shall we? You can include anything in your portfolio, even an unfinished work. Half sketch it if it shows what you're capable of. It just has to prove the point that you are exploring your creativity. Ooh. And make sure you put your best artwork in front, something that is really cool. You really want to make a dazzling impression. Your total portfolio is going to consist of 12 to 15 pieces of your greatest creative work. All right, so now that we've gotten through the preliminary stuff, I'm gonna share a few secrets on how to make your portfolio incredible. And trust me, it is so easy. Welcome to The Survival Guide to Creating a Portfolio. It's always nice to see your range of media. You can be a sculptor, a painter, a graphic design artist, or even a jewelry maker. We wanna know what you are capable of. The point is, show us variety and highlight what you do best. Let's talk about your depth of media. Depth of media is where you feature the one thing you do best and give us three to four examples of that particular medium. You can show us ceramics, animation, sketchbook pages, robots, even game art. If you're a painter, you can explore different styles with the same subject or explore different subjects with the same style. I'm sure it helps when you have a muse like me. For example, if you're really good at portraits, do three to four of them in different styles. This, so going up on my wall. But what if you're really good at a particular style? Well, paint three to four subjects in that particular style and voila, you'll nail the depth of media thing. The reason for all of this is to showcase what you're best at and what you're most passionate about. All right, so now we know all about depth and range of media, but you may be asking, how, oh all-knowing, how do I even create a balanced image that incorporates design and composition to make my art look great? Well, definitely not like this. Oh, we have some work to do. Show us how you think about where to put things in your art. We want to know that you are thinking creatively about the arrangement and design of your stuff. Or, design and composition. How do you use the whole space? How does foreground, subject, and background work together? Think about how everything fits together. You know, how you balance an image. Now we're getting somewhere. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to cover in your portfolio is depth of creativity. Depth of creativity shows us who you are and how you are unique. Nature can be beautiful, but we wanna see your voice, not just another picture. If your artwork looks like what everyone else in your art class created, you may wanna think about changing it up a bit. Show us your individuality. Show us how you can create something new and fresh from what you see around you. I mean, how cool is this? One more little tiny detail. There are often things that are overrepresented. Please, please. No disembodied heads. No zombie pets. No vacation photos. No pics of significant others in the woods. No dogs in bandanas, and please, no floating eyeballs. You get it, right? And now, we've come to the finale of finished, amazing, diverse portfolio. What a star! Well, now you know the basics to your portfolio. I hope the survival guide to creating a portfolio has served you well. So, go out there and make one. And make sure to contact the chair of the art department at Miami University. They'll be happy to help. Promise.
Until next time, 